Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii is calling out the DNC during a town hall in Iowa this weekend. The presidential candidate told supporters that Iowa primary voters were, quote, more important in selecting a nominee than committee officials. Gabbard also has some harsh words for the president. In a tweet, she accused President Trump of awaiting instructions from his Saudi masters. She joins us now via Skype with her thoughts on all of this and so much more. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Absolutely. Good morning. I mean, so Congresswoman, you have I mean, you used much harsher language than what I uh, read there about the president's position on Saudi Arabia. Why does this why does this offend you so much and why are you so upset about this decision? Uh, well, look at that tweet that I was yeah. pointing to uh, in that to have our president, of the United States, commander in chief of my brothers and sisters in uniform, stating very clearly to the world that he is locked and loaded, ready to use our military asset waiting for verification from the Saudi kingdom on who exactly was behind these attacks, and then waiting to see how we should proceed. I believe that's a direct quote, how we should proceed. So all I was pointing out was the very obvious, that Trump is ready to offer up our military to be used however the Saudi kingdom sees fit, to go after whoever the Saudi kingdom deems responsible uh, for this attack. Uh, now, we know that Secretary Pompeo, almost very, very quickly after that attack on the Saudi uh, oil supply happened, he said, well, Iran was responsible to get the latest uh, move by this administration to push our country into war with Iran, a war that would be far more disastrous and costly than anything we've ever seen with the Iraq war, consequences that uh, would be really unimaginable. Do you believe that Iran was responsible for the attacks on those oil interests? I think what matters more than what anyone believes is the evidence. First of all, there's a few issues here. That there, there needs to be evidence that actually points to who is responsible. Secondly, if this administration or anyone is proposing the United States military go to war with Iran, they need authorization from Congress to do so. That is mandated by the Congress. Uh, the Constitution does not give the president power to unilaterally uh, use our military for Saudi Arabia's interest to go to war, uh, nor does it give him the power to do so without the express consent of Congress. And third, if I were president now, I would make it very clear that I will not use our military to further the interests of Saudi Arabia or any other country. Congresswoman, you you talked a bit about that, about this Iran and the Saudi Arabia situation. You During the foreign policy section of the last debate, you were not on the stage. What would you have said if you were on the stage during that section? And who do you think, uh, dis, who do you think showed the, the biggest disagreement from your views on that stage? Uh, you know, to be honest, I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I would, mm -hmm. I would have very directly stated if I was on that stage how important it is as we are seeing right now, to have a president and commander in chief who has experience and a depth and understanding about our foreign policy and the cost and consequences of decisions that are made so we don't keep making short sighted decisions. Uh, the experience that I bring, both uh, serving as a soldier for over 16 years, deploying twice to the Middle East, as well as my experience serving in Congress on the Foreign Affairs Committee, the Armed Services Committee, the Homeland Security Committee, give me that experience. Uh, and, and first-hand understanding, and most importantly, the conviction that comes from that, to walk into the Oval Office on day one, prepared to do that job, to end these wasteful regime change wars, make sure we're not getting into any one, work to end this new Cold War and arms race, make sure we're focusing our resources on, on actually serving the needs of our people right here at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of love that you didn't even watch the whole debate. <laughs> um, a, a Democrat, Senator Chris Coons, has said that uh, Iran's alleged actions here may well be the thing that calls for military action. I mean, what would lead a Democrat to take that position? Uh, I, I don't know why anyone in Congress would make that call, given we are here because of the short-sighted decisions that have been made, uh, specifically uh, this administration choosing the side of Saudi Arabia in this generations-long sectarian war, uh, Trump continuing the policy to support Saudi Arabia in the genocidal war in Yemen. Uh, we're seeing uh, Trump's action in tearing up the Iran nuclear agreement, implementing crippling economic sanctions against Iran, 
uh, mobilizing more thousand four of our troops to Saudi Arabia, designating Iran as as um, military, as a terrorist organization. All of these things have led us to this point today. So whether Iran was behind the attack or they weren't behind the attack, we've got to understand how we got to this point and make sure that we as leaders do all that we can to prevent this president and administration from using my brothers and sisters in uniform to be to be pawned off into uh, being used as Saudi Arabia's mercenaries. Mm -hmm. Congresswoman, some of your the other uh, people running for the Democratic nomination have called for the impeachment of Justice Brett Kavanaugh after some new botched New York Times reporting. Is that something that you would join uh, the, your colleagues in supporting? I think it warrants further investigation. You know, one thing that we saw through Brett Kavanaugh's hearings was uh, the whole thing seemed to be very fast tracked. There were questions that were being raised. I think the FBI was not pursuing all the leads that they were given. Uh, I think it's something that we need more information on before we make any decisions about what happens next. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about our relationship with another close ally um, in the Middle East, Israel. Uh, Senator Sanders has said that he would consider withholding aid in order to pressure Israel over potential human rights abuses. Is that a, an action that you would support? I think there's a number of different kinds of aid uh, that goes to both Israel as well as to Palestine, a lot of the aid that we've seen previously going to Palestine, as well as programs administered by the UN, has wrongly been withheld by this administration, very clearly pointing out Trump um, alliance and allegiance to Bibi Netanyahu and trying to help him in his reelection, rather than thinking about what's in the best interest of the American people and our taxpayer dollars, and what's in the best interest of pursuing uh, peace and how we can help support a path toward peace that will provide security and stability for both the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've got to look at how the United States can play the most constructive role in getting us back uh, on that track where we can at least begin to support uh, constructive talks, which have shut down long ago. Congresswoman, you're also scheduled to head to Houston to appear with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There have been some concern. Actually, I'm not. Oh, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> this is okay. this is some fake news that's flying around the internet. Okay. Uh, we got an invitation to go to that event uh, back in August. Uh, I already had a number of uh, conflicts, specifically around the days that that event's happening, and so sent in our regrets back in August. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure where this came from. I was never going to be able to attend there. I'm actually going to be here in Iowa. Well, there you go. I'm we glad just we made clear the news that up. Clear that up on our show. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about uh, what what's going on in Iowa. What are yeah. you hearing from voters there? And how has the fact that you weren't on this last debate stage impacted your campaign strategy? Uh, it hasn't really made an impact in the sense that we have always been and we are continuing to do all that we can to reach directly to voters, both here in Iowa, New Hampshire, the early states and different parts of the country, recognizing that uh, no matter how much the DNC might try to make you believe that they are the gatekeepers in this election, that it is ultimately the voters who make that determination and that choice. And, and Iowa voters know that. You know, they don't take kindly to outsiders coming in and saying, hey, well, you, you only get to choose from these people on who you will put forward as Democratic nominee. And, and the response that we're getting here is, is really, really tremendous. People who are connecting with uh, the message that our campaign is delivering and that message being a unifying one. You know, I'm really proud of and inspired by the fact that at every single one of our campaign events, every single one of our town halls, no matter how small or how big, we have Democrats, public independents, libertarians, uh, undeclared people all coming together and saying, you know, we may not agree on every single issue. We'll have differences on how to solve the problems that uh, we're facing in this country, but we come together on this unified platform of respect for our fellow Americans, our love for our country, our appreciation for our freedom, and that we must move forward together in order to solve the great challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. Final question for you, ma'am. What will it take for you to get on the uh, to qualify for the next debate stage, and do you expect to be on that stage? Uh, we'll see. You know, there the DNC has set out its, its qualifications. There's been a lack of transparency and how they've determined those qualifications, which polls they see as uh, credible or, or which they'll recognize and, and which they won't. Uh, you know, we long surpassed the donor qualification requirement uh, weeks ago. 
uh, polling requirements. I think that there are over 30 credible polls now that show I have either met or exceeded their 2% requirement. Uh, however, they've only chosen to recognize two of them. So debate or no debate, we are driving forward and we're really appreciating this opportunity to be able to meet voters in person and using every platform possible. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Thank we really you, appreciate it. We'll have more rising for you after this.